you, you've that's actually, a political thing. So, 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 so what you've done there is you've generalized. You've said Chris as if we're one group. I myself, I myself am, 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 am a critic of Zionism. Um, but at the same time, I think that whilst whilst Israel is a threat to local Christians and should be should be dealt with as a threat to local Christians, it's not an existential threat to all Christians. Whereas it doesn't want to be filmed. Whereas so just voices only. Yeah. was the last question. So yeah, it's all right. No, no, no filming. Right. So um, so the. Uh, so, but, but Hamas and the Islamist groups that have taken over the Palestinian Authority and taken over the Palestinian cause, when they're finished with Israel, they're not going to stop with Israel. They're going to go after other Christians because they are already persecuting Palestinian Christians now. And if they're palestating, if they're palestate, if Hamas and Islamic Jihad and other Islamist groups are already persecuting, persecuting Palestinian Christians, it clearly shows that they're an existential threat. And for that reason, I'll support Israel over Hamas and support Israel over Islamic I've Jihad. I've across a guy that's a Christian in the PLO. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you've got a Christian in the PLO, how are they going to be? I mean, I don't know. The, the, the PLO doesn't give equal rights to Christians in Palestine. It is not permitted. It is. It is. It is not. It is, it is not permitted by the PLO for Christians to evangelise Muslims. It's not permitted by the PLO for Muslims to convert to Christianity. And so, for that reason, the PLO is as, as much against the church as Israel is against the church. But I'll say this: the PLO is also just a regional threat to the church. The problem is not the PLO. The problem are groups like Hamas and Islamic Jihad who are part of a much wider Islamist jihadi movement that has global ambitions, what not just what regional. What do you mean by jihadi? So I mean by these scummy, filthy dogs who use violence um, to impose Sharia by force over others. What if a Christian group came about a militia, they, and they put Christian laws. Would you, would you say they're the same? Would well, you, let's you... let's not just get away. Let's not just change the subject. Um, we've we've got ex oh, There's a spider coming towards you, bro. It looks like a meanie that one. Skip over the fact that we have this Islamist jihadi movement. Do you think that it is right for Christians to and and for others to fight against this Islamist jihadi movement? Which one? ISIS all of them. Hamas, because I'm Palestinian and they're under fire, they're, I'm not going to... JC! He doesn't want to appear on video, just voices. Just no, voice no, no. only. Turn the camera that way. Just okay, voices, okay. just capture the recording. Okay. Yeah, don't, don't put him on camera. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, so let's... So I'm talking about every jihadi militant. The PLO is a secular movement. The PLO is a secular nationalist movement. So, so let, let, let's just separate these two things out. Can yeah, a Christian right. fight against ISIS? Can a Christian fight against Boko Haram? They're kind of like the ISIS of Nigeria. Can, so, my point to this is... So What's the fight out there? Yeah, so, so my point is that the aim in fighting against Islamists whether that be by hand or by mind or by word, because Islamists are the vilest kind of what about, human being. What about Palestinian Christians fighting against Zionism? Well, obviously, I'm on the side of the Christian every time. So where so Christians, the Christian so, group came about. so where Christians are fighting against um, Israel's treatment of the Palestinian people, I'm on the side of the Palestinian Christians. What if the okay, for example, in Lebanon? But but but. I'm not going to ignore the fact that groups like Hamas and Islamic Jihad and other Islamist groups who have kidnapped the Palestinian cause for their Islamist filthy agenda are, are persecuting Palestinian Christians and you shouldn't ignore that either. Don't talk to me about Israel's treatment of Palestinian Christians unless you are willing to condemn 
every Islamist in Palestine who persecutes Palestinian Christians. Are you willing to do that? I still don't know what you mean by Islamist. Is that just I've a told movement? you. No, hang on. Because you've ISIS are one thing, Hamas is another thing. <coughs> I wouldn't put them in the same category. Right, I do. And the reason why I do is ISIS and ISIS and Hamas are, 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 are two sides of the same coin. ISIS has in its constitution, in its constitution, that it's going to fight the Jews everywhere in the world. It's literally in its own charter. It makes references, no, it makes references to the idea of fighting the Jews until Judgment Day. ISIS, Hamas, is committed to the idea of the dimitude of Christians. That means that Christians in an, an Islamic state set up by Hamas would be second-class citizens, where they don't have the same rights as Muslims. That trashy worldview should rightly be opposed by every decent human being. The question is, are you a decent human being? Are you willing to oppose Hamas's intention of making Palestinian Christians second-class citizens? Anything Hamas does against Islam, I condemn it. But Islam teaches that. The... The dimitude of Christians. If you talk about, for example, the jizya, that's one thing. Let me tell you about jizya. Right? Yeah, that's so dimitude. They don't, okay, the jizya is, for example, let's say we're in a Muslim nation. Yeah. I, I pay zakah, you pay jizya, okay? I They're not be, comparative. I have to be in the army. I have to defend you. You're not in the army. That's how it is. I have to be in the army. Yeah. Conscri what's the word? Conscription. What's it? You don't, you're not in the army. You're not even allowed in the army. Can I reply? Okay, now I didn't interrupt you when you said that. Please don't interrupt me. Firstly, you've got a false equivalence. Jizya is not equal to zakat. Jizya can be up to, I think, 50%, whereas zakat is set at 2.5%. Zakat is a redistributive tax that only benefits Muslims. Jizya is taken uh, from Christians and is taken and used by the Islamic State not specifically for the benefit of Christians, but for the benefit of Muslims, particularly to fund jihad against other Christians. Secondly, jizya, jizya re results in uh, the, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a protection racket. It's saying, it's saying that if you don't pay this tax, we're gonna punish you. In it, zakat, zakat, I agree, has a punishment if you don't pay it. But my point is, they're not comparative. They're but, not comparative. But, but the thing is, right, there's no, zakat is a, like a worship, right? Now in Islam, it says no compulsion in religion. So how can we force you to pay zakat in Islam? How can it say no compulsion in religion and make you pay zakat? Jizya is something else, but in return, you're protected. I'm, I have to be in the army. I have to protect you. Right, hold on. The, the Islamic armies don't protect Christians. No, the, the, Islamic armies in Islamic states uphold the tyrannical caliphate. Well, that's wrong. Let me finish. Let me finish. Islamic armies do not protect Christians. Islamic armies uphold a, a vile Islamic dictatorship that oppresses Christians as second class citizens. They are not there to protect Christians. They're there to oppress Christians. That's what. Ha that's historically what has happened. Islamic armies have helped to suppress Christians through 1,400 years of Islamic history, through every single Islamic caliphate that has ever been anywhere in the world. Christians have been persecuted, and Muslim armies have upheld that persecution. My point to you is, bro, like. It, 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 you, you, you believe fantasies about your own religion. You've got this romantic view of your own religion that it just doesn't line up with history, it doesn't line up with facts, and it doesn't even line up with the teachings of your own sources. You, you're believing a fantasy because you want to think nice things about Islam, but you're not doing the objective study to see if any of those romantic ideals actually work with the facts on the ground. I feel you're, you're, you're looking at it from a negative, trying to find a negative. You're looking at it in a way that will push you to keep Christian to secret Islam in a bad way. Islam is bad. Let me give you an example, right? I want to tell you, let, let, I, let's say I started a political party today, and in my manifesto, I said that Muslims couldn't have the call to prayer in the mosque, that they couldn't do dawah, that anyone who converted to Islam should be killed and will be executed, that uh, Muslims have to pay a tax that is t that can be up up to fifty percent. 
whereas, um, whereas Christians only pay a tax of 20%. Um, and I said to you that you couldn't repair your mosques, you couldn't repair your mosques without our permission, that you, um, you couldn't display your faith out in public in a way that people could see. Well, you can have churches Wait, in Wait, one it, second, yeah. one second. Would you, say, would, you, would you say that such a political party is a good political party or a bad political party? If it said we couldn't have um, mosques. If it said that you couldn't build new mosques and you couldn't repair old ones. I'd say that's a bad thing. Right. Well, that's exactly what Muslims did to Christians for 1400 years in Egypt and Spain. Under Omar, I know that the Christians, there was churches and you let the, you let the Christians, you know, have churches and... That's what I know. Right, but Umar, you've got to remember the point that uh, this occurred, thank you. You've got to remember the point that this occurred in, in terms of Islamic history. The Muslims had literally just conquered the known world, right? They didn't have the administrative power to apply all of Islamic teachings immediately because they were vastly outnumbered by the Christian populations that they had just conquered and they didn't even then have the power to govern on a day-to-day -day basis. They, they, their armies used to sit outside of the cities because the cities were too vulnerable a place because they were surrounded by their conquered peoples. So my point to you is that at the time of Umar, it makes no difference that these things happened. Umar couldn't have stopped them anyway. Even, even if the Muslims are in full power, there's nothing I've come across, no Quran, no Hadith, that says they can't, the Christians can't have churches, the Jews can't have synagogues. Only if it's paid jizya. No, 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 no. It's, in, it's in the constitution of, um, bear with me, I think it's in the constitution of Umar. Could you, could you, one of you Google the, 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 I think it's the, the Treaty of Umar, sorry, thank you. It's okay, I'll put these down here, try to remember them. No, of course they had to pay Jizya. But it, bear with, it's the Pact of Umar. Right, so in the Pact of Umar, okay, uh, let's go. These are the terms of the Pact of Umar. Right, well, Umar was a bad guy. So the, 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 the Pact of Umar states things like this, right? Uh, it, it lays down the, the particulars of the dhimmi, the authenticity of the. Uh, let's just. Uh, the text of the Pact, right. This is what Christians had to agree with under Islamic rule. We will neither erect in our areas a monastery, church or a sanctuary for a monk, nor restore any place of worship that needs restoration, nor use any of them for the purposes of an immunity against Muslims. We will not prevent any Muslim from resting in our churches, whether they come by day or night, and we will, no and we will open the doors of our houses of worship for the wayfarer and the passerby. Those Muslims who come as guests will enjoy boarding and food for three days. We will not allow a spy against Muslims into our churches or homes or hide or deceit against Muslims. We will not teach the, our children the Quran. We will not publicize the practice of shirk, polytheism. Um, brother, he doesn't want to be on camera. Oh, so sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Okay, so so the, 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 there you go, I've just read it to you. The Pact of Umar says that Christians cannot build churches and they cannot repair churches. Website, That's the Pact of Umar. You just look up the Pact of Umar, pull it up from whatever website you want. Right. Here's what else it says. Right, bearing in mind, saying that you can't publicize practices of shirk, bearing in mind that Muslims... So... so as a Christian, would you not agree with that? Muslims accuse Christians of shirk. So when it says, don't display shirk, it's saying don't display Christianity. Well, away, away from Christianity, for example, a Christian nation came and said, we're not going to allow Hindu idols and that. Would you not agree with that? No, hold on one second. Okay, I know, Let, you, I know you're saying that they're, saying they're referring to Christianity. Did they, did the, do Muslims, did Muslims in the classical period and Muslims today say that Christianity is a form of shirk? The Trinity is, I believe, yes. Right, so therefore, they're saying that displays of Christianity are forbidden in public. 
And did they mean the so, cross? And yes. Stuff? So they're saying in Christian lands that they've just conquered, open displays so of Christianity Levant. were not allowed. Yes, the Levant, that was Christian before Muslims invaded it. Yeah, centuries later. Yeah, but no, but no, no. But, 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 but hold up one second. Let's not escape what I'm saying. Muslims conquered Christian land and said, you can't display your religion publicly in your own land. Is that evil? If we, co we conquered Iraq, easy as pie, and we conquered Afghanistan, easy as pie. If we had turned around to those conquered peoples, not we, but the Americans, and gone, you can't practice Islam publicly, would you have called that evil? Had Christianity been the religion of truth and with evidence, and it says that in Christianity, then yes, I would. If so I you're an Islamist apologist. You're saying that it's okay for Muslims to do something that Christians can't do to Muslims. What I'm saying is, so basically, there you go. If, At which I, point you've, you've 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 just you've just lost this debate, bro, because you have no moral you have no moral no, context. Because if you're let's say the Christians at the time of Jesus, yep. He's going to come back and he's going to rule. Now, now let's not there, but if he's going to say, um, I'm against, we believe he's going to end the cross. Yeah. If he's a prophet for me, I have to follow him. Yeah. If he's saying we're not allowed to have crosses, I'm not going to say, no, democracy, everyone can have the. Yeah, but Mohammed's not a prophet. Well, I don't believe he is. That's where we disagree. Mohammed's not a prophet, and the reasons why we know he's not a prophet is because. Are you aware that the Quran states that Allah will protect Muhammad from mankind? I mean, did he not do that? Right. Okay. Do, are you aware that that's what the Quran states? I don't know. I don't know. Right. I don't know. The Quran states that Muhammad will be protected from mankind. Okay. Um, are you aware that Muhammad was bewitched? Is that in the Islamic... Uh, yeah, it's in the... Would you like me to show you? Would you like me to show you? Again, I haven't got my Quran on me, so... During his prophethood or before? Yeah, but during his prophethood. Let me show you. So a man bewitched Muhammad and Allah said that he would protect Muhammad from mankind. So Allah can't keep his promises. And if Allah can't keep his promises, Muhammad who said that Allah was going to protect him is a false prophet because he's saying things about God that aren't true. So why, if you don't, so why, if, let's say the prophet's point of view, if you guys believe that he's not a real prophet, why is there not another Qur'an? How come all the people now with the technology, you can get all the Arabs that speak Arab well but are anti-Islam, and with all the technology, could you not come up with something better than the Qur'an? This is, this, wait, 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 one second, bro, one second. The, no, no, bro. Oh, he's just why gonna, you're just it? letting him walk away from my argument. Bro. The, 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 the reality is that's got nothing to do with what we're talking about. I want to see this. I trust this website. Right. So yeah. Talking about uh, so I, this is a sooner.com, right? Listen to what it said. The Allah's messenger was affected by magic so much that he used to think that he had done something which, in fact, he did not do. And he invoked his Lord for a remedy. So that's the first problem, right? is that because of black magic, Muhammad was misguided. He thought he had done something that he didn't do. So black magic meant that Muhammad had been misguided into thinking something was true that wasn't true. Now, Allah has said that he will protect Muhammad from mankind, but a Jew has bewitched him. Right? That's your first problem. Well, God healed him, it says. Yes, it does say that later. But the problem is, he's, be he's bewitched. Uh, Allah has failed to protect him from black magic. So he healed him after? Yeah. Before that? He should have protected him. He should never have been. Like he said, well, you could still say he, he, at the end he was protected. But no. No. If, if I'm protecting you now, I'm stepping you in front of him, he wants to punch you. Am I protecting him? He wants to punch you now. Right. And I'm stepping here. Am I protecting you? Yeah. yeah. But, he, yeah? Akhoya, so now Habibi, if he, Habibi. Habibi. But if, if say, I, if oh, say you, yeah. you get a slap in, but then he pushes back, yeah. he's protected me. Fine, I've, I've had something done to me, but he's. Oh, but would you, would you agree then? Would you agree then? His protection is not complete. Stop being rude. Convert to Christianity. You're, fuck Islam. It's the religion of the paedophile. Come on, all the people. You know, in the, that argument, in those days, 
a, a nine-year-old is not like a nine-year-old today. There's no evidence for that. And even the enemies of Islam at that time, they never had a problem with the, that fact because you, everyone was doing you're it. Still, you're, you're st still... still light, uh, light, uh, One second. Richard the Lionheart, his wife no. was 11, and he's no. a Christian warrior. You're letting, guys, can we, can we please just have one conversation? Yeah, 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 of course. Right. Allah has said that he will protect Muhammad from mankind, right? And can I just ask, was that verse, was it in a general or was it a specific incident? Like, was it the going into war? And all of the verses of the Quran have a specific incident. Some of them are general, some are specific. No, they all, they all have a specific incident. But some can be general. For, yeah. for, for example, could it not but, mean that there was a time of war? And so, if, if Muhammad gives a promise to Muhammad that he's going to protect him, but he doesn't manage to protect him, but instead yeah. deals with the consequences of his failure to protect, right? So let's say, let's say I'm going to attack you. He wants to protect you, but I manage to get a smack in and I splatter your eyeball. And then he, and then he stops me from attacking you further. And, 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 then, and then deals with helping you repair your eyeball. I he's maybe protected me from killing me, but not from... But, but, but his, his protection isn't complete, is it? But at the same time, what I want to know, is the verse specific to some an incident? For example, was there a battle the Muslims were going into and the and the and that's when the verse came down, or is it general? Well because you're gonna you're gonna you're, I, need to, I need to not research it. So the, so so the all here's the the Quran states and this is what the Quran states. I mean we can pull it up if you want, I've got to find it. But I I, I want to stick with this hadith, because there's more problems in this hadith that demonstrate Muhammad is a false prophet. He's a false prophet. Just the camera, you know. Yeah, he's a false prophet because he's a false prophet because um, he speaks. Think, yeah, that's fine, bro. He's, he's a false prophet. He's a false prophet because he speaks that which isn't true about God. He said God would protect him. God didn't protect him from witchcraft. Uh, but, but here's here's the here's the real problem. According to Islamic sources. All magic is the work of the devil. Did you get that? Did, do you, did you know that? I think I might have heard. Yeah. So all magic is the work of the devil, right? That means that when Muhammad was being affected by black magic, he was being misguided by the devil. Which prophet would you want to say in the Old Testament was misguided by the devil? The Bible say that a prophet wrestled with God. For me, that's more far-fetched. That, that's the changing the subject. Stick but with this. You ask me why do I say Muhammad's a false prophet? I'm no, giving you my you reasons. Said, um, why which prophet would be, get bewitched? For me, a prophet, that just shows it's human. Well, for me to say a prophet fights with God, then why yeah. is your prophet fighting so, with God? So, so, the, the, the fact that the problem is not so much, the problem isn't so much yeah. that he is bewitched by the devil. The problem is that God promised to protect Allah promised to protect him and failed to do so. I mean that verse Can Allah fail in his promises? No. So does Allah fail does Allah promise to protect Muhammad from mankind? Well, I, I need to know about was it specific Oh well, pull it up then. I don't know You've got a phone, because, use Google. Because there's some verses they'll be specific to an incident, you know. Yeah. What I mean? Yeah. Right? Also also, in addition to that, you've got the fact that a Jewish woman poisoned Muhammad. Exactly. If, if, if Allah said he's going to protect Muhammad and then someone manages to poison him, where's, Maha where's the bodyguard? Where's Allah the Almighty bodyguard? Did you know the best general? Well, you pull it up then. You pull it up. If I find something else. Yeah, yeah. Right? Let me just pull up the ruling on, on talismans. Yeah, there are, I've just read the verse here. There is, there's a woman who poisoned Muhammad. Yeah, we know that. It didn't affect him. It did affect him. Yeah. It did affect no, him. It did told him, the Jewish told him here, if you are a false prophet, if you are a liar, you cannot die straight away. It says here, it's an immediate death. But if you are a, if you are a true prophet, Allah will protect you. In the same hadith, Allah, Allah prophet promised Muhammad, Allah would not let it happen. But then, but then later, but then later he states, it says that if Muhammad wasn't a prophet, Allah would cut off his aorta, is, the, is, is what the, the Quran states. The, the aorta is the, one of the veins that leads to the heart. 
Mohammed stated after the poisoning, he said, I still feel the effects of the meat that I ate from the Jewish woman. I feel like my aorta is being cut off. That's what he said. Yes. Yes. So let's let's just let I just want to let one second. So I just want to pull it up. Follow Al Bukhari. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm a Muslim, I believe in the books of the Quran. Okay, okay. Right. So. Right, I'm just while you're while you're looking. Yeah. Bear with us. Um, so you look at there's something uh, saying right hold on one second because you said you you interrupted my conversation that, yeah. so that's fine I accept your apology so in 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 al Mahdi al Mahdi yeah. sorry not al Mahdi that's not where I'm going sorry in, in al Bukhari 4165 it says this Aisha said the yeah. prophet yeah, I know that used to say during the illness of which he died yeah. oh aisha i still feel the pain of the food i ate in kyber and oh, this time yeah. i feel and this time i feel my aorta is being cut from that poison can i read the arabic one yeah you pull it up you pull it up i ain't got my phone yeah. so um, that's no, sahel bukhari 4165 so Muhammad is saying that he is he's dying of the poison from the Kaiba. He still feels No, I didn't say that. 4165. Yes. Um and Muhammad is saying No worries, no worries, bro. Right? Come come here, bro. Right? Sorry. Okay. I've read the hadith, yeah. He still feeling pain from Exactly. But but he died of the illness. But but the Jew said, the Jew said, if you're from God, you won't die. But he died of the poisoning. Yeah. He died oh, later of the poisoning. The shaykh, yeah. It made but him ill. Affected, affected, affected. Yeah, he was affected. Yeah. yeah. But but the poison did yeah. kill him because my evidence is there is a hadith that I can, so I cannot find, which there was a. Um, I think this is my answer. So uh, sorry. sorry, we got we got two conversations going on. He follows the Al Bukhari. Yeah. Right, go on. You, go on. Well, this one, I trust this website. Yeah. And the question is reconciling between the verse. Yep. Yep. From the people. Yep. And the death of the prophet. Yep. Yeah. The yeah. Go on. Go on. It's a long answer, so I'm going to show try and find a bit where they summarise it. Yeah. I've also read this, so I'll help you. Do you know it? Yeah. Let me show you. Yeah, I've read it. Bear with us. It's a Sahih Hadith. It's Islam QA. Do you know what the, that's the website I go to? Yeah, 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 that's fine. Basically, he's saying that um, what could have been, there's more of your opinion, it could have meant there's more protection from extensive harm, which is pretty much what I was like, what I put first understood. There's another opinion here that says. That he was jealousy. on his mission sites because they've asked about his death. So while he was on his mission, he was protected. Right. I need to ask someone like this, this question because it's very specific. I need to ask a scholar. It's hard for me as a layman because if the verse, is, if the verse may be general or it might be specific. Right. Bear with us. We don't know what purpose is. This could be the injury or the gospels were. Richard, uh, what is happening? I'm so back? sorry. It's so what's happening? I think I follow the drama. Let me just see what's happening. Well, I need to check whether a Christian is in that drama. Oh. Whose phone is this? Thank you so much. Have a read of that. Come back with your questions, bro. Come back with your questions. But in the meantime, I want you to explain to me why Allah failed to protect Muhammad from the influence of the devil. Because remember, Islam teaches that magic is the work of the devil. So yeah, yeah. there's this hadith that states yes. that Muhammad said that talismans and incantations are, or shirk 
And then one of the Sahaba said to Muhammad, How, why do you say that prophet? I go to a Jew when my eye is swelling and he gives an incantation and the swelling goes down. And then Muhammad says to the Sahaba, he says, no, it isn't the incantation that's doing that, but it is the devil. He is the one that makes the swelling go down when the Jew speaks, but when the Jew stops speaking, he, he, he takes it away. So in other words, Muhammad teaches that black magic is the work of the devil. The Hadiths teach Muhammad was subject to black magic. So why did Allah the Almighty allow the devil to influence Muhammad's mind? I'd have to ask a scholar. Well, go and ask one. Because I try to ask all these so-called gibberish scholars we've got in the park. Shakes and shakes are pl self-appointed shakes are plenty. Ali Dawa will run away. Go and tell Ali Dawa to come and debate me. He'll run away. He'll run away. And Ali Dawa is not a scholar. I mean, I respect him. He does good work. Yeah. But my point is, my point is. I've got all your shakes on the run, bro. Last week, I liquidized the brain of one of your shakes. So much so, so much so, that he was so beaten in argument, he turned violent. He's a Syrian, I think, because his name is is. Yeah. He's now known as Abdul Crutch. Uh, uh, and to be fair to the fed, fed, Muslims, as big as Kona, they have condemned his actions, but from my conversation with Muslims. Okay, yeah, did they put it on camera? Yeah, uh, Off camera. put it on camera, but it's the table yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, I just want to. Anyway, God bless. Take care.